All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakan Kadash, Yahweh Honest to the Apostle, to the Elders of Great Millstone. Peace, love, and much. <clears throat> Peace, salutations, and much love to the brothers that are doing all this work in truth and sincerity. I say uh, shalom to you, brothers. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 12. You know, how can I myself bear alone, bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? Take ye wise men and understanding and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. And ye answered me and said, the thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to, for us to do. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men, and known, and ma made them heads over you, captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, and captains over fifties, and captains over tens, and officers among your tribes. You know, because this was one thing um, that we did. This was something that we did in order to keep order within the nation. You know, you had captains over 50s, you know, captains over 10s, captains over 50s, captains over hundreds, captains over thousands, because that's just the order of the things that the Lord, how how the, the Lord wants things to be done, you know, because the nation of Israel is a big nation. So Moses was saying he couldn't carry all of those burdens by himself, you know, so anything that was probably too um, severe, they probably bring it to Moses, but if you had any problems or altercations in these situations, you would take it to your nearest judge, you know, because we had judges amongst our people, just like Esau have judges in this day, you know. But see, Esau, he don't judge according to the scriptures, you know. His judges go off of their laws and their um, situations. And, you know, you know, if somebody commit murder, you take them to the judge and the judge puts them in jail, you know, for life or when if you commit murder back then and you take him to the judge the the whole congregation stone him with stones man that he may die you know cuz he'd be put to death and that's the righteous judgment that the lord set up man and he says verse 16 it says and i charge your judges at this time saying hear the causes between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is within him because this is something that we did back then you know, you have a book of judges. You know, they say, uh, you, uh, only God can judge me. No, that's not, that's not, you know, a fact. You know, if the Lord judge your ass, he's just going to put you to death. You know, that's his judgment. You know, and ultimately, if you're judging righteously, if it's a sin unto death, you're going to get put to death by that righteous judge. That's in, in authority over in that section or over this certain amount of people. You know, the captain is over tens. You know, he probably just, you know, deal with minor situations or anything, man. You know, but the point of it lesson being, man, we had judges set up to to uh, handle situations. You know, you know, any type of situations, whether it be adultery, uh, thief, or, you know, anything that was against the law, they was set up to execute that judgment righteously because that's what we are we are judges you know scripture says a spiritual man it's lucky First Corinthians two fifteen it says, "But he that is spiritual judges all things; yet he himself is judged of, of no man." So that's plain and simple. The, the, uh, the spiritual man judges all things, man. Um, let's go to Psalms chapter two. It says, verse ten. It says, "Be wise, therefore, O ye kings." Who is that? The nation of Israel. It's talking about the nation of Israel, you know, Yasharala. Because what are we? We're a nation of kings. You know, it says, uh, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve Yahweh with fear and rejoice with trembling. And it says, ye judges of the earth. Because who are we? We're, we're the judges of the earth. You know, we're, we are going to be set up to uh, judge 
this next known world, which is going to be governed by uh, the nation of Israel under Yahweh Hamashiach. When he returns, he's going to set up his kingdom. He's going to set up his uh, his judges, which the judges that he want are the elect, man. Right? The ones should have 44,000. Okay, it says judge to examine, appraise, make a dis di di diagnosis, to form an opinion about, to inflict penalty upon. That's the one I wanted to look. I was looking for, to inflict a penalty upon, to punish, try someone, and pronounce sentence, make a decision, decide, think, suppose. So that's the job. That's the job of a judge. A job of a judge is to make a decision. To uh to inflict a penalty upon someone, you know, because if somebody uh commit break the law, statute, of commandments of the Lord, guess what you do? You execute that penalty that comes with breaking that law. It says make a decision, decide. That's what judges do. They decide. They think. You know. Suppose, uh, it says to judge. To pronounce judgment, and that's the that's the part about it. To do judgment. Okay, that's a, a judge, right? Law. So that's the point of a judge is to execute the laws, statutes, commandments. Okay, I got this, because that's what we are—a nation of kings and priests—and we're also judges at the same time, because we're going to be in that power seat under Yahweh Shah. He's the ultimate judge. This is Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 17. It says, Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is the most highest, and the cause that is too hard for thee, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. You know, so that's what, that's this is the order that the Lord set up, the way he has set things up in the spirit, how he think he wanted things to go down. You know, the Lord created a righteous order and a, a just order in the earth amongst the nation of Israel. And once we get in that power seat, we're going to actually push that vibration onto you heathens because you're going to have to obey the nation of Israel, whether you like it or whether you not. You're going to have to follow the laws, statutes, and commandments of the of these scriptures. You can't commit adultery. You can't steal. You know, you can't, you can't work on the Sabbath, you know. You know, you can't do, you can't worship any other gods. You can't bear false witness. Just naming a few. You can't worship your idols. You can't have hope. You can't have a, a, a you can't be a homosexual. You know, you can't be a dyke. You know, the Lord is going to take all of these impurities out of you people, man. You're going to have to follow him and his righteous way. And the scripture says his way is, is right, man. It's pure. The words of the Lord, Lord is pure. And the law is perfect, man. I can't remember where it's at, but the scripture says somewhere that the law is perfect. So let me see if I can find it through the spirit. Ooh, there it is. Psalms 19 and 7. It says, the law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. Let me see if there's not. Let's see if it's another scripture. Sirach chapter thirty four and eight. It says the law shall be found perfect without lies, and wisdom is perfection to faithful to a faithful mouth. So the scripture says the law shall be found perfect without lies, man. The Lord didn't create the the law full of lies, man. You know, the law of the Lord is perfect, man. Dude, this is a dagger right here. Psalms 19 and 7 again. It says, The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. So, wisdom, you know, the wisdom of the uh, of these scriptures is going to be something that's going to be known in our kingdom. You know, everybody don't know about the law, statutes, commandments. You know, well, they know about them, but they don't follow them. You know, they may know about the law, but they say it's done away with. Which that's not true, according to Baruch chapter 4, verse 1. 
you know, so everybody's going to respect the laws, the commandments of Yahweh Hashem Shah. And these laws, the commandments, they make you wise, you know, because if you're wise, you're going to actually live, man. That's how you live long time. You got to be, you got to follow the laws, the commandments, and your days will be multiplied, man, you know, because if you don't follow the laws, the commandments, what is that? That's sin. And what is sin? The wages of sin is death. This is Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of the Most High is eternal life through Yahweh Shah Amashach, our Lord. So that's simple. Verse 8, Psalms 19 and 8. The statutes of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. So this is simple, man. You know, the statutes are right. You know, we got certain statutes that we're supposed to follow. And it's, it's no in it's no impurities in those statutes, man. You know, just like uh, when it comes to cleanliness, you know, just like if you uh, like the scripture says, the seed of copulation. Uh, Leviticus chapter 15 verse 16 it says and if any man's seed of copulation go out from him then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean unto the evening and every garment and every skin thereon is the seed of copulation shall be washed with water and be unclean unto the evening verse 18 and women also with whom she whom men shall lie with seed of copulation, they both bathe themselves in water and be unclean unto the evening. So this is this is a statue that Yahweh Shmuel Shah uh, set up, you know, because the seed of copulation is for, referring to sperm, you know, because when you have sex with a woman, you know, um, what do you do? Like you uh, you reach your climax and you release uh, semen, you know, and if that gets on you, then you're unclean or wherever. Or whatever that touches, whatever that a semen touches is unclean, including your partner, your female partner. If she gets touched by the semen, you know, a uh, seed of copulation, she is unclean and she has to wash her body. And everything that touches the seed, the seed of copulation touches has to be cleaned, has to be washed with water. And then you're going to be unclean until the evening, which the evening, you know, is when the, when the, the end, the day ends and the next day begins. You know, so you unclean the rest of the day, basically. This is a statute that Yahweh Shmuel Shah set up, man, because we supposed to be clean. You know, cleanliness is next to godliness, man. If you're filthy, man, that's that's not a good sign. You know, filthy is wickedness, man. Righteousness is clean, man. Clean and in order. Wickedness is un unorganized, you know, filthy and unpure. You know, it's a balance. It's a balance of things, man. It's a scripture that talks about the balance of things and the little way the Lord had it. It's in Sirach. This is what I'm looking for. This is uh, Surat 33. I'm going to start at verse. Fourteen. It says, Good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look upon all the works of the Most High. And there are two and two. One against another. So that's that's the that's the balance of things, you know. When the Lord created these things, He created it in a balance, one against another, wickedness against righteousness, man. That's what it's all about: left against right, you know, evil against good against good versus evil, you know, godly against ungodly, sinner, a godly against the sinner, so like, which is ungodly, you know, same same thing, you know. So 
the point of the lesson, man. We are going to be judges in these earth, in the earth, and uh, we need to know how to judge righteously. Uh, we got to be righteous judges, man. We got to be a right judge before the Lord, or the Lord ain't going to let us be in that, that judgment seat. See, Esau ain't no righteous judge. That's what the Lord finna remove his ass. Um, Sirach 10 and 1, it says, A wise judge would instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. Hey, man, that, that says a lot right there, man. That says a lot. You no, know, I don't have to break that down. You know, if you have ears to hear, you understand that, that scripture right there. I'm going to read it again. I'm going to read it slower this time. It says, A wise judge will instruct his people. And the government of a prudent man is well ordered. Because it's all about order. Everything has to be in order. Man. Yahweh Shai is coming back to set up order in the earth. You know? Which he's the king. And he's coming to set up his government. I got to get Isaiah chapter, chapter 9. Because he's setting up his government on the earth. Verse 2, it says, As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. So if the ruler or the judge of the city is wicked, then guess what? The people in the city are going to be wicked. If the judge and the ruler of the city is righteous, guess what? The people are going to be righteous. Why? Because they're going to follow that energy. They're going to follow that that energy that comes with being a righteous judge. And if you're being a wicked judge, they're gonna follow that energy that comes with being a wicked judge. Cause they're gonna if you you're gonna be they're gonna do wicked things if they if it's a wicked ruler. Cause he's allowed that. Cause he as him he is himself. The people are as himself, which is wicked. So if they are a righteous judge, they're gonna be as the ruler of the city is. Because if you're a righteous judge, you ain't gonna allow wickedness to go on. And if you're a wicked judge, you're not going to allow righteousness to go on. You see? So, this is plain and simple to the, the, the men of the Lord. Verse 3, it says, An unwise king destroyeth his people, but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. So, who is that unwise, unwise king, Esau? He destroys his people. He gives them drugs. You know, he sells drugs. And then turn around and bust you for it. You know, he he uh, condemn people, you know, wrongfully. Majority are Jake's put him in jail wrongfully, you know. And the list goes on on all of the things that he do. But, you know, through the spirit, the Lord's going to put this devil in the ground. And he ain't going to rise again. Verse four, the power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. And in due time, he will set over it one that is profitable. And who is that profitable king? Yahweh Shai. You know, the Lord proved him and found him worthy, man. And it says it pleased him that it pleased him that all uh, in all uh, yeah, here, for, uh, for Colossians 1 and 19, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. You now, so it pleased him that everything was should be upon Yahweh Shah's shoulders, you know, so to speak. You know, it pleased him that he should be the one that, you know, sacrificed himself. It pleased him that he should be the one that's going to be that king, that righteous king, that's going to order that government that he wants, that the Lord wants. It pleased him to do his will. You know, because he knew Yahweh Shah, his son, his son, you know, was going to execute what he told him to do. That's why it, he's, his the father spoke from heaven, from the chariot and said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Because he knew that his son was going to execute that word that he wanted. He knew his son was going to do what he commanded him to do. And he, and he could trust him to do what he wanted him to do. This is Isaiah 9 and 6. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. So, let's look, in, look into that word government. It says, An act of governing or ruling. Remember what the last scripture said in Sirach chapter 10 about the ruler of the people. 
So Yahweh Shah's ruling is going to be a righteous ruling. It says a system by which a thing is governed. Control, direction. So we're going to lead the people in the right direction. Esau is leading the people in the wrong direction. It says administration. Yahweh Shah is coming to set up his administration. Starting with his, with his elect. It says to steer, be at the helm of, govern, rule, command, direct. To direct, rule, guide, govern. To steer, to pilot. To meaning, governing power. So Yahweh Shah is coming to, con to guide and control the earth and rule the earth. You know? And under the laws, that's the commandments. It says, from the top again, Isaiah 96, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. The ruling shall be upon his shoulder. He's the guide, you know. It says, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, shall his rulership, remember, remember what rule, uh, government means, ruler. A rulership, you know, um, it says peace and peace, Salakia, start from the top, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it. Remember what the scripture says in Surah 10, the government of a prudent man is well ordered. It says, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from even from henceforth. From now, even forever, until forever, the zeal of Yahweh shall perform this. So the Lord is the one that's going to execute this. He's going to use his son to do it. You know, so we're uh, we're going to be judges in the earth under Yahweh Shah Mashiach. We ought to get familiar with the order of things. You know, so we got to get in the order of that Yahweh Shah Mashiach has set up. You know, through his father, man. So we got to get with that program. And many of the people in this world, they don't want to get with that program, but they're going to have to. They ain't going to have no choice. Because if they don't want Yahweh Shah to rule over them, Luke 19 and 29, 27 tells you what to do. He said, come and slay them before him, man. Come and kill them in his presence, man. Kill them before him, man. You know? So with that, man, I hope you brothers was edified with this lesson through the spirit, man. My police officers spray fake blood on themselves during Philadelphia shooting.